joined here by Adam Alnazer. And Adam, we appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, you know, it's been kind of a crazy fall for sure. I'm sure you're getting more adjusted now that we're a couple months in, but oh, yeah. what, have, what have kind of been the things you've noticed about, you know, practice and everything now in the new normal? So, yeah, it's a little different right now. Obviously, we have our own little workout groups that we have to kind of stick by. It's been pretty tough because, you know, we have, like, guys you want to work out with that you're so used to working out with that you're so used to being around in workouts that you can't be around anymore and you have to abide by the rules, which is a little tough. But it's been exciting getting to know the new guys, definitely. You know, we have some new freshmen and transfers, which has been really exciting to get to know them and work out with them, see what they like to do on different runs and different workouts. So it's been really exciting, honestly. How nice was it just to get back, too? Because, you know, over the summer, you know, we had no idea what was going to happen. You know, we're all kind of quarantining off and on. You know, it was hard to stay, you know, working out on your own. So how nice was it to just get back on campus and at least get back to a routine again? It was actually really nice. Uh, I know I kept in contact with Holloway a lot, like, during the summer. We were talking about, you know, we have this date that we'd come back and work out and then it'd change for another month or a few weeks and it's like when are we going to finally get back together so it's been really it's definitely really nice to finally get back and be with the guys and and the coach yeah what were some things you did you know during the summer just to stay active uh so i had surgery in the summer i had surgery in june early june and before that i was hurt so i couldn't run because of the surgery i had double inguinal hernia and so we had to take care of that so I took about two and a half months off prior to the surgery, and then I had to take about two and a half months after that, which is really tough. So it's about like a five month kind of no running at all. I did a lot of walking, you know, and and I progressed up to obviously hiking and then finally running. And it was just really hard because, you know, you don't have any other teammates around you to help you out, kind of support you and a, or a coach to like, you know, I didn't want to always message coach be like, what should I do? It's, it's just walking and, you know, some jogging in there. So my summer was pretty un- inactive, but you know, finally, I finally got introduced to running slowly, and now, you know, finally back to running, which feels really good. Because in some ways, too, you know, it's never good to get injured, you know, but in some ways, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. At least you didn't have to, you know, during the season, say that, you know, you come back in September and that happens. So exactly. at, least, at least you had recovery That's time. something that I've always said about this thing, and like with COVID, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. I don't have races that put me in pressure to get fit. You know, I have to be in shape for cross country. I'm racing conference or whatever it is. Now I'm kind of thinking... I'm not going to race till probably March, April, maybe even later than that. So it's been kind of nice not to think about, you know, how in shape I am to kind of take my time with the fitness and let it come to me instead of forcing it. When you think back to last year, you know, how tough was it? You know, we're through the indoor. You guys just do the GNAC indoor. You know, our 800 really stacked. We're getting ready for nationals. You know, you're around with the guys with, you know, DMR about to go. Yep. How tough was it to kind of get that shut down and know that we had no outdoor season on the horizon? Yeah, so actually the the day I found out that we didn't have practice, I had, or we didn't have any more outdoor, it was really tough on me. I had, like, a really good week of training, and I was getting really, like, I felt really confident in my ability. I was starting to kind of come around. And, you know, everything kind of shut down out of nowhere. And I had kind of a shock system to me where I kind of got sick for like a full week because I was just so sad about things. I tried to get back into it, but it was just really hard. Obviously, I had uh, the two hernias were really hurting me, you know, before that too. And it, it was really hard for me. It was just kind of shocked me because I was just so excited for outdoor. I thought we had like probably one of the most stacked middle distance programs ever. You know, we had about six, seven, or even eight guys in the 800 that could score. Same as same in the 15, you know, a bunch of versatile guys. So it was just really tough, I think, on the whole team. But I think we we have similar stuff going on this year that I think we can do a lot of work in in the, in the middle distance events for sure. You know, you touched on it a little bit, but, you know, what was kind of what brought you to, you know, Western Oregon, you know, with the middle distance is always being strong here, you know, and most specifically, you know, your events because, you know, you're in the 800, the 1K, 15, you know, you run the mile too. So what was kind of your draw to come to Western Oregon? Uh, I came from junior college, so I had not very great times in high school that would probably not get me on any team. And so I went to junior college and kind of started running a lot faster, which helped me. And so I looked around the programs uh, around the, the country and the state in California, and I saw many programs had these like guys running a lot of good like 5Ks or 10Ks, but that didn't really draw me much interest because I'm not, I don't lean towards those events. I look more towards the 815. And when I looked at Western Oregon, I talked to a few guys like David Ribich and Dustin Nady. And, you know, I looked at the program just going one, two, and then you look down at like five, six, and then you look down at 11 and 12. It's like they're all still running amazing times. And you look at that much consistency and that much, you know, versatility of around the 800 to 15. Even some, some guys could do well in the 5K like Tyler. And I saw like obviously there's great coaching, there's a great culture. So that's something I really 
was drawn to, and I was like, this this has to be the team, you know? Yeah, had you been up to Oregon before? Because, you know, you're from California. Yeah, so, no. I mean, was this, was this the first time you're like, hey, I might as well go up there and see what's going on in Oregon, right? Yeah, that, <laughs> that was the, that was my f- it was my second time in Oregon, but I was really excited because, you know, everyone talks about Oregon and California because, it's, you know, it's the running kind of culture. You know, you have Eugene, you have Prefontaine, all that stuff going on. So I think a lot of people in California kind of look up to Oregon, definitely the culture there. And I was really excited. It's a lot different than California, for sure. The weather is a lot different. A lot of the, I don't know, just a lot of things are different. The running trails, all that stuff is a lot different, which I'm getting still, I'm still getting adjusted to, but I like it a lot here. You know, what was it that kind of got you into, you know, cross country and track growing up and, you know, kept you going and wanting to run at the collegiate level? Yeah, so I actually didn't start running track or cross till about junior year of my high school, so I started pretty late. That's, I, I, like I mentioned before, I didn't run very fast in high school. You know, my PRs were really slow, I would say, and then, you know, JC helped me out. Starting so late, I think, helps me. You know, it makes me really excited for the sport because I feel like I have a lot more to give, which I still feel like that with this last year. Yeah, how I joined track is actually funny. My friend and I made a bet, and he told me that if I lost, I had to do track, and that's how I got into it. And it turned out to be, like, the best thing I ever did, so I don't mind that at all. And I'm always drawn to it, you know, from the athlete perspective and even the coaching perspective. You know, I always like to read books about coaching, and I still strive to be in in the coaching position after I'm done running, which I'm really excited about for the next, you know, 40, 50, whatever, 60 years I can do, yeah. You know, how much does it help you, too, you know, being a dual? Because, you know, a lot of them do cross-country and also do track. How much does it help, you know, running those longer distances in cross-country than help you, you know, with the middle distances you do in track? Yeah, I, even though I really struggle in cross-country, I think it helps a lot, you know, with mental toughness, being really strong. I, kind of going that long distance, I, I think, helps me a lot. It's something that I feel like a lot of 800, 1500 guys should be able to do, you know, is run really good cross-country. I think it translates really well. It, it also helps with the team culture for sure. You know, you get closer to guys. You go on these trips and you're running a 10K in the snow, which was really tough in conference or 8K in the snow. And it was just, you know, 25 or 30 minutes of just pure pain. But it made us tougher. And you look back on it and it was like something that I would for sure do again because it was just so fun and so tough. You know, last thing for you too. A, how weird does it feel to be a senior already? And then B, you know, hoping that we'll have a season here in the spring. You know, how much are you looking forward to, you know, training and getting ready for what we got in the spring? It's definitely different. It's weird for me because, you know, I came in as a transfer, so I only had, uh, I guess this is my third year here, so it's different. But the time's, time's definitely flown by. Like, thinking about COVID, it's been here for around almost a year now. It's getting pretty long now. And I can't believe how long it's been around. I'm really excited for, for things. As far as the season goes, I'm not really worried about it too much. I think, you know, as far as the surgery went, I kind of knew that I'm not going to be racing very, like, fast or even racing at all until about February or March. So I'm not really too worried about that. I am the kind of person that doesn't mind doing a lot of workouts, not really racing much, because I I find the most enjoyment in doing those workouts with the team, you know, cranking out really hard reps, really hard long runs, all that stuff. I think I find a lot more enjoyment than that than racing every single week or, you know, racing twice a day in, in, in a race week so I don't really mind that right now but I definitely will get bored of the workouts and you kind of want to get start throwing down some fast times with the guys so I'm really excited for for racing I, I hope you know we get an outdoor season around like you know April or May all right well Adam we really appreciate you swinging by thanks for taking the time today we look forward to catching up with you here soon yeah no problem thank you for having me